Kieran Dixon with the kickoff. Curtis Tia collects that, has to go down on his knees to collect that, and he's going to bring the ball forward himself. Is the uh, is the centre? He's taken down 10 metres away. Newton in there at dummy half square coming across. Lasarus Tabu bringing the ball forward. He's going to be wrapped up three, four with this Vikings defenders involved in that. Plays the ball now, just short of the 20 metre mark. Then finds Tom Walker. Walker's going to be fetched down centre field, 25 metres away from his own line. Newton in there at dummy half. He's going to come right once again now, finds Lachlan Lansky. Lansky takes Whitehaven over the 30. Ball being put round onto his back lines involved in that tackle alongside Lawton and Roberts there as well. Now comes left to Doran from dummy half, then finds now Lucas Castle. Castle, Fozard, Johnson and Wild all involved in that tackle. Five and last now for Whitehaven. Newton's going to be in there at dummy half, the 40 metres away from their own line of Whitehaven. Ball comes left to Jamie Doran, put a pressure there on Doran. He's able to get a kick the way and bounce, bounces behind Kieran Dixon, but then bounces kindly for the fullback to collect and start to bring this ball forward he's run about 10-15 metres there's Dixon Chris Taylor trying to go for the one-on-one -on -one after Lansky fell off the tackle but Newton and uh, Taboo then got involved as Dixon hit the floor Newton trying to get the uh, slow, uh, the quick tackle there from Dummy Half not able to do so and Vikings now bringing the ball second tackle only 10 short of halfway Fossard then finds Ryan Ince and first penalty of the afternoon goes to the witness Vikings for a high shot on Ryan Ince Sports spent plenty of time here as well on dual registration from the Vikings back in the Super League days yeah, with it being this hot, Jordan, that's the last thing you want. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, the first set of a defensive set there, you know, it's just a loose, loose arm, you know. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're one minute, two minutes in, and that's a, it's a, it's a poor, poor tackle by, uh, I think it was James Newton. So Gilmore bangs the ball into touch, Roberts then takes the tap, they're 30 metres out here, are the witness Vikings, Farmworth the prop forwards the man taking his first tackle and has been pushed back to round about that 30 metre line so no tackles made on that occasion Fozard goes right into Johnston and then finds Lawton looks like Jordan Johnson's going to be used more as an extra half in there for the uh, Vikings this afternoon Fozard's in there at dummy half now 20 metres out are the Vikings comes left to Johnston then to Lyons and across to Sam Wild Wild's going to try and get through that gap Lansky Doran and Walker it takes them all to bring him down Fozard then goes right less than 10 metres away going across left to right then Gilmore then across right to Dixon Dixon then finds Ecclesley Ecclesley's going to try and get away can't get away from King and Connor Holiday They're only less than five metres out are the Vikings it's Grady in there at dummy half comes left now to Gilmore Gilmore's put a couple of lights screw a kick forward he bangs off the post and Jamie Doran is the quickest to react just put a ball hand out there to collect that ball but he's wrapped up less than two metres away from his own line yeah first set of uh, real attack on uh, White Evans line by witness looked really dangerous but uh, White Evans have, uh, have thought it that and uh, uh, oh. ball hits the floor lost there by the white seven man couldn't quite see who it was it was Jamie Doran who's dived on that but it's going to be a scrum down here head and feet to the witness Vikings and white seven not helping themselves in the opening three minutes here yeah I was just about to say a great reaction by Jamie Doran to uh, get it off the pad but uh, unfortunately he's just come up with a, a little error in a in the worst sort of scenario at the worst time really for white Evan, um, at this moment in time so scrum down, head and feed to the Widnes Vikings. It's Lions that's going to feed the scrum. 10 metres out, centre field here. Uh, Widnes, Whitehaven fell to a scrum player in the open three or four minutes of Sheffield last week. Are they going to 4-1 on this occasion? Roberts going to try and step inside. They are going to do a, a, a Whitehaven, they are. It's Max Roberts, the centre that's gone over. They fell to a first uh, scrum player last week. Bailey Lou was a try scorer on that occasion. On this occasion, it's Max Roberts, another centre for the Widnes Vikings. Only four minutes gone here at the LEL Arena. It's Whitehaven nil, Widnes Vikings four. Yeah, I'll go back to my uh, my pre uh, pre match comments. You know, you've got uh, two teams with witness coming to uh, on the back of defeat and, and a lot of focus in their uh, in their performance today. Whereas White have uh, a, a really poor start uh, on the back of uh, a penalty and an error back to back. And uh, usually they uh, they you know, if you're going to give it uh, ten metres out, they usually end up with uh, a try by the opposition. So. Yeah, poor, poor start from, from White Evan. I hope they can uh, can react accordingly uh, after this kick. Well, they did so last week at, uh, at the Olympic Legacy Park. Like you say, three or four minutes, Sheffield Eagles went over and scored last weekend from a scrum play. So if you get a similar reaction from that, hopefully they'll be uh, going White Evan's favour. But it is now White Evan nil, winners Vikings 6, Tom Gilmore with the conversion. For the witness, uh, for the witness Vikings. So, 
like you say, the uh, message is going to be coming out there from Johnny Gawley. It's going to be tough enough out there, fellas. You don't need to be putting yourselves under under any more pressure. It is, and just having a quick crack with uh, Johnny before the game there, and you know, it's, they've, they've got what it takes, why, Devon? But uh, you cannot afford to give teams uh, free free piggybacks in, in into your own half uh, with penalties and errors. And, and that's been Whitehaven's downfall, and it, it, it's every every club's downfall. But uh, you know, Whitehaven can't afford to do that today against this what looks like a decent witness performance. So Rock with the kick off collected by Ryan Ince, then back inside to Adam Lawton. Lawton got to be met there. There's a few tackles, a few players in that tackle. Walker, Taboo, and uh, Lucas Castle. Ball inside now to Farmworth. He's got to strap him round his head already as Farmworth. So. It'll be one easy to spot this afternoon. Well, we Matty Fozard's in there at dummy half now. Jordan Johnson, Johnson gets it away. It's on the edge. It looks Sam Wild. Wild's down just over the 40 metres, round about eight short of halfway. Ball inside then to Johnson. Johnson takes it on the line. Actually takes the line on. Tackled by Castle and Taboo. Now in centre field, only two metres short of halfway. So a couple of tackles left in this set. Fozard goes right. Gilmore's going to go for the early kick, trying to find Ted of Firmer. Bounces kindly a couple of times and into the hands of Dave Eccleston. Eccleston collects in centre field and is going to be taken down 22, 23 metres away from the Whitehaven try line. Rock's in there at dummy half. Very slow play of the ball. Pulls up offside. Referee Liam Rush says no, all is well. And Rock's going to pay for the fast line speed there. He's being pushed back, so no metres made on that occasion. Doran in there at dummy half now going to find Taylor. Taylor tries to skip away from one did skip away from one but the second witness defender was there waiting his fetch down 20 metres away from halfway to Boo now in centre field the Fijian 8 metres uh, short now a halfway it's centre field fourth tackle Newton in there at dummy half going to come right to Tom Walker Walker then gets the ball away to Lansky Lansky's going to find his way backwards over the halfway line with six and a half minutes gone here Whitehaven on the five and last Newton's in there at dummy half going to go left to Jamie Doran Doran spotted some witness defenders and just able to skip around him then put a little grubby kick forward Dixon has to collect he bounces kindly for the full back and he's going to be fetched down 20 metres out away from his, uh, from his own try line yeah, good set by White. Uh, and, uh, both both teams just uh, grinding out the sets. Uh, you, you've got witness with 100% completion at this moment in time, and, and White even just the uh, just the one failure there. But a good set from White even to get them, uh, you know, get them steady this ship a little bit. So Ryan Ince is the man now just taken down, centre field, 30 away from his own try line. Ball goes right to Grady. Grady does make 10 metres before being fetched down. Walker to Boo and King all involved in that tackle. Fossett then finds Lawton. Lawton's going to be taken down as well, but he's made 10 metres as well. He's the five and last. Vikings find themselves exactly on halfway. Ball then comes left into the hands of Lyons. Lyons, it's a high kick. Josh Rock's underneath it. Collected that with no issues there. Josh Rock has got a little bit of space in front of him, but a good chase from the witness defence once again. Haven fullbacks taken down 25 metres out Eccleston in there at dummy half is going to have to scoot on his own didn't have too many options did the white Haven winger but has got himself to just short of the 30 metre line Doran in there at dummy half now similar tactics to what was employed at Sheffield last week Doran doing a lot of work in there to go and trying to take some uh, some workload off James Newton Oscar Doran the man bringing the ball forward I think he sent six of one and half of a dozen of the other in terms of that. So China saying now that uh, Oscar Don is now playing the ball in the incorrect position. I don't think he should have taken that far back, but has done. Then gone left now at dummy half to Curtis Tia. Tia takes Whitehaven over the 40, 10 metres in from the popular side touchline. Newton then comes, ball goes into King, then Walker. Walker's just going to run, keep his legs pumping, keep his legs pumping as he always does. Does the prop forwards in very good run of form at the moment five and last on halfway ball comes right to Jamie Dorden out the back to Rock there's an overlap on here Chris Taylor can't get that ball away to Eccleston so did try to go for the power play Whitehaven ball didn't come to Taylor just fast enough for him to be able to get that ball out but he's going to be wrapped up turnover ball 40 metres away here I think we're having some communication issues with the match officials so we're going to get an RFL official on there just to try and sort out the communication for Liam Rush yeah, quite surprising that Jordan, that set of uh, set of six there. They've tried to run it on the last, just you know, in their own half, really. So I thought the uh, the better option would have been just uh, another kick and put pressure back onto the uh, to witness defence. You know, they've, they've, they went for that play, but I, I think the play was on. It's just uh, that he's give it to uh, Rocks, give it to Chris Taylor instead of Nicholson. 
uh, and I think if he'd hit Eccleston uh, with a first pass there, Eccleston could have been uh, could have been clear. So I think that was the intent. He just didn't execute properly. But uh, uh, interesting to see White um, go go early with that. But see if they'd executed that, could have been a different uh, different ball game. So Vikings now going to have a turnover ball, just ten short from halfway. Ball's in the hands now. Winger Joe Edge. Four tries this season for the Vikings as Joe Edge. He's fetched down eight short to halfway. Fozard's in there at dummy half. Goes right to Jordan Johnson again. Gets the ball onto Farmworth. Farmworth is going to find himself over the halfway line. Only just though, only half a metre or so for being fetched down by Tom Walker and Connor Holiday. Fozard goes right, then finds Grady. That's going to be a high shot on Shane Grady. Ryan King with a high shot on, on Grady's. Very first attempt, Shane Grady started on the wing early in his career. Then progressively moved inside was a centre for a number of years at Halifax and now transitioning into the second row second penalty of the afternoon for the witness Vikings second penalty of the game just short of 10 minutes gone here at the LEL Arena it still remains Whitehaven nil witness Vikings yeah, 6 and that's what I can't understand Jordan we're, we're 10 minutes in uh, you know there shouldn't be a lot of tired bodies out there and that's where I would expect the eye tackles but two eye tackles in 10 minutes uh, you know uh, White have not doing themselves any favours so Lawton the man fetched down calls of a forward pass not interested was referee Liam Rush Jordan Johnson now is the man trying to bring this ball forward plays the ball only 12 out ball goes right to Gilmore out the back to Dixon Dixon's trying to step inside gets away from King gets away from another he's only just going to be fetched down is King and he's actually uh, sorry is Kieran Dixon who's judged to have lost that ball in the act of uh, hitting the floor there I think he potentially might have been trying to get his arm out to score the try that's how close he was was Kieran Dixon but has lost that ball and it's going to be time stopped on the clock around about ten and a half minutes gone I think is it uh, just trying to have a look I think it's Lasarusa to boost uh, down potentially Dixon there as well yeah it looks as though he's at the uh, and it, it, it looks like a, a pretty tough surface out there you know there wouldn't be any studs I know we got a good rainfall last night but uh, it still looks like a hard surface out there and it looks like Dixon's just hit the uh, hit the hit, hit the surface a bit too hard probably with some good defence difficult to see from here but probably with some good defence there from Whitehaven unfortunately for Whitehaven he's, he's spilled that ball as he's hit the uh, as he's hit the surface so he's going to be scrum down head and feet here both players are back up Kieran Dixon and Lasarusa Taboo and it's going to be Taboo that uh, he is going to be able to take his place in the scrum Dixon's going to take his place as well out the back leaving a, a forward just to uh, to defend this but Whitehaven are going to have head and feet only 10 metres away from their line in centre field ball comes out the back from the base of the scrum now and then finds Chris Taylor Taylor's going to try and get away from uh, Max Roberts but penalty to Whitehaven straight away it's going to be an opportunity here for Whitehaven to be marched up the field witness Vikings called offside at that scrum it's very rare you do see offsides given at a scrum not the best of kicks I'd say from Jamie Doran but it has made just around about 20-22 metres potentially could have got another 5-10 metres on that though but ball's inside now to Lucas Castle tapped from that penalty and he's taken down eight short and a half way in centre field 11 gone Haven nil witness six BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Online ball in the hands now of Lasarusa Taboo Taboo's fetched down just short of halfway centre field calling for lying on there of the White Haven faithful a couple of the White Haven players calling it as well Liam Rush wasn't interested and Castle's now taken down centre field 10 metres in to Wheaton's Vikings half ball goes left to Lasarusa Taboo once again pushes one off and then it's taken down just short of the 30 Newton goes left into the hands of King King's then going to come back inside from where the player the ball came from Tom Walker was there on the crash ball but King didn't take that option but he has bounced one off and two and there's now one and two and eventually combined to bring him down it is the five and last Whitehaven only 20 outs Newton goes left into the hands of Doran Doran's going to put a little kick over Curtis T is going to chase that it's collected by Ryan Ince he's behind his own goal line he's got work to do here as Ryan Ince and he's actually come back in the um, just underneath the sticks and he's done very very well to get beyond the uh, try line there yeah. as Ryan Ince and ball in the hands now of Joe Edge yeah criminal there Jordan you know you've got to come away with someone it was a beautiful kick. however however fantastic work in defence by Whitehaven we have just put Joe Edge back around about eight and nine metres and pushed him back behind the uh, behind the try line it's going to be a goal line dropout force here by Whitehaven fantastic work in defence from the home side I'll retract that statement a great uh, great defence by Whitehaven there it was a great kick by uh, by Jim Jamie, you know, you've got to get someone from it. You've either got to catch it and score or you've got to put him in the in goal. And, you know, 10 seconds later, we have put him in the in goal, which was great defence. There's going to be Kieran Dixon with the goal line dropout. 
it's going to go around about 35 Curtis Tia collects 10 in from touch ball then finds Tom Walker and Walker's going to be taking this tackle 25 maybe 24 metres away from the win this Vikings try line 15 in from the popular side touch line Kings in there at dummy half going to come right to Taboo Taboo's going to take Whitehaven within that red zone less than say, 16 17 metres away from the try line very slow play the ball once again Newton in there at dummy half comes right to Doran comes right to King then just a little line ball to Lachlan Lansky Lansky within the 10 metres make that 5 metres now of the try line before being fetched down Chris Taylor is in there at dummy half it's going to come left out the back to Castle Castle takes the line on Farmworth's involved in there Johnson and Lawton as well now right in the uh, shadows of the black dot only 5 metres out Newton in there at dummy half it's going to go left to King most of the uh, work was on this right hand side he's now the five and last is King's taken down Newton in there going to go right on the crash ball to Tom Walker Tom Walker's going to try and twist and turn in that tackle he's going to be held up there he's Tom Walker and like you say I think the player before it wasn't the best option from James Newton the Whitehaven players had lined up on this right hand side edge and Newton decided to go left and just sort of slowed the uh, momentum down of that set yeah, I think with uh, with Ryan King jumping in there at six, you know, I was I was wondering what kind of job he's going to do, and I think you know all the emphasis is going to be on Jamie Dorden to create some something uh, for the back lines from the outside backs, and you know just Kingy there, really a bad option there, but I think why did not take that? You know they've, they've they've got them on the line there, and they've asked them to come 90 metres. However, they have just given a six again, away there. I think Jamie Dorden just for a push, an extra push there in the in the tackle, so. Vikings, this will be zero tackle, 35 out from their own line, 15 short of halfway. Lawton now taking them to less than 10 in from halfway, centre field. In there at dummy half is Fozad goes right to Grady. Grady's going to take the Vikings over that halfway line before being fetched down by King. Who else is involved in that tackle? Is it Lassalusa Tabu? Yes, it was. Ball then comes left to Johnson. Johnson out the back to... Lions and then gets out the back of Dixon. Dixon's going to run over Jamie Doran and get over there. Chris Taylor and James Newton soon retreat back and fetch the Vikings full back down. But witness now and only 20 metres so away from the line. Roberts in there at dummy half goes right to Farmworth. Farmworth's just going to crash this forward. Ball is lost. Is it lost cleanly and legally? He was. It was a one on one strip and he's gone backwards into the hands of Josh Rock. Rock's going to try and get away then finds now Oscar Doran. Doran I think is going to be piled into touch here. He does very well to stay in the field of play. He's only a metre or two in from that popular side touchline. Rock's in there at dummy half now finds Curtis Tia Tia's trying to find some space the uh, Kieran Dixon and Liam Rush have collided in back play and just going to have a stoppage in play here there was no need to stop that play there uh, wide of at all the momentum there Jordan I know the referees fell over but he was, he was up before they played the ball so he could have let that go on so Tia plays the ball on the 40 10 short of halfway finds Connor Holiday. now only 5 short of halfway as he's taken down is Connor Holiday Newton in there at dummy half is going to come right to Lasarusa Taboo Taboo does take Whitehaven over the halfway line only by a metre or two Newton still in there at dummy half is going to come right to Tom Walker Walker then we're in with uh, Jamie Doran then Rock then Chris Taylor tries to get the offload away ball hits the floor and bounces into the hands there of uh, Lyons I think Josh Rock was calling for a late hit there nothing given by the match official it's going to be to play the ball on halfway Whitehaven struggling to complete a set in the last couple of minutes yeah both teams coming up with uh, errors and as I say it's not the type of day to be uh, to be doubling up on uh, on, on, on tackling so you know somebody so one of these teams has got to get a grip get back to the basics get get to grinding through the sets uh, and, and, and gain and fail possession because it is a warm day oh and it's Tom Gilmore that's going to break through this line try to get the offload away it's going to be kicked through by Grady then collected by Dixon it's real going to be real to have been a knock on not too sure where that knock on was because I'll tell you what the pass from Gilmore was certainly was backwards and it come off Grady's foot so I think White Devon may just have gotten away with one there and um, the Whitehaven physios signalling Tom Walker to Tom leave Walker. the field. That's not good for Tom Walker, but Ross Ainley and Daniel Spencer Tonks is getting ready to come onto the field. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully for Tom, that is, uh, you know, he's available to go back on a bit later on because they are. They, it's one thing today they are going to need 17 fit bodies. Yeah, he's not a hair try here because he has to go and take his place in the scrum first as Tom Walker, but the Whitehaven physio was certainly signalling that Walker did need to leave the field so Ross Ailey and Spencer Tonks is getting ready to come on it is Tom Walker and Lassarusa to Taboo that's getting ready to leave the field in the meantime Curtis T is the man taking down only 12 away from his own line Connor Holliday and it's going to be a penalty here for Whitehaven Witness Vikings pinned once again 
Watford offside, 17 and a half minutes gone here at the LEI Arena. It's Whitehaven nil, Witness Viking six. Yeah, it's the indis- indiscipline of Witness at the moment that's uh, that's that's going very well for Whitehaven at the minute because there has been a few warning signs on Whitehaven's defensive uh, defensive 20. Witness have made a couple of breaks now that just haven't executed well enough to uh, to score over the try line. So you know the warning signs are there for Whitehaven. So hopefully we can. Uh, we can get back up uh, and get some field position in the uh, in the witness half. So ball in the hands of Conor Holiday, and he was the man to take the ball in after the penalty. He's done very very well there, Conor Holiday. Made around about 20 metres, twisting and turning onto them tackles. Fast play of the ball, Newton in there at dummy half finds Curtis. Tia Tia's trying to get the offload away to Oscar Doran, but ball hits the hand of Doran and goes into touch. It wasn't the best of passes, Curtis Tia, just a little bit ahead there of Doran and goes into touch. Whitehaven trying to. Uh, Trying to go for the power play, trying to go for that, but uh, ball hits touch and scrum down head and feet to the Witness Vikings. And in fact, these days it's a play of the ball. Yeah, Tia stuck his head through there. He's, he's, he's attracted the winger in, which has left Dorden there. Just Dorden, uh, unfortunately, it's come very quick at him. Probably not in the right place as well. So, yeah, unfortunate there, or it would have been uh, it would have been four six points. Play the ball, Jordan Johnson plays the ball, and the witness man. Now it's Max Roberts that's bringing the ball forward. He's taken down 18 away from his own line. 19 gone here at the LEL Arena. Fozard's in there at dummy half. Ball then comes out to Sam Wild. Wild's then going to be taken down just short of the 30. Fozard's in there at dummy half. Scoots then finds uh, Roberts once again for his second tackle uh, within the set, second carry. Taylor and Dorn and the men to bring him down Fozard goes right, Perry Singleton's getting ready to come onto the field now for Whitehaven as well in there next attacking set, ball is in the hands now with Dixon gone through a couple of pairs of hands before getting to the Vikings ball back and he's actually just gone over halfway, 10 in from the popular side touchline Eccleston then it's going to take them over the uh, 40, 35 out now on the 5 and last for Widnes Vikings away from Whitehaven line, Gilmore's going to put a high kick up cross field towards Dave Eccleston Eccleston is going to collect that no pressure on Eccleston at all but he's soon met by some witness defenders three or four involved in that 12 out Rock in there at dummy half then finds Chris Taylor Taylor's going to try and find a gap there Chris Taylor nearly broke through did the centre but taken down 25 out Rock yeah. in there goes left to Daniel Spencer Tonks it's Petty Singleton to come on the field to replace Lucas Castle Spencer Tonks taken down, 10 short of halfway. Newton in there at dummy half, now finds Ainley in centre field. Ainley twists out to the tackle, is going to fall down two metres short. Calling for the second effort of Whitehaven, nothing given from Liam Rush. Ball in the hands now is Singleton. Singleton's going to be taken down centre field, 38 away from Witness line. It is the five and last ball goes left to Jamie Doran. Doran's just going to bang this ball into touch. Just a bit of game management there from Jamie Doran. Sensing some of his players might just need a break for a second or two just to try and get some air in the lungs. Found touch. 20, uh, 21 minutes gone still remains Whitehaven nil with the six yeah probably the best uh, the best attack and set that Whitehaven's done up to press at this moment in time you know they've come they've come 80 metres there with a great kick by Dawn at the end but heavily really reliant you know the backs the, the, the wingers the centres have got to get well involved today They've got to take a little bit of heat off these forwards and then two good runs by the two new props that have come on that have put Whitehaven in a great position Vikings now bringing the ball forward through Ryan Inst interchange for them while for Davis has just come on the field to replace Adam Lawton ball in the hands now with Gilmore Gilmore's going to be taken down just short of halfway King and Tia both involved in that tackle Fozard's in there at dummy half ball comes left to the recently introduced Oliver Davis Davis is going to be fetched down just five over halfway in centre field Fozard's going to come left once again to Jordan Johnson Johnson takes it towards the line gets the ball away to Farmworth Farmworth then gets the off all the way to Fozard. Fozard's going to try and break through here. Trying to get away from King. He gets the off all the way to Gilmore though. Then finds Jordan Johnson. And Johnson then he's going to be wrapped up and taken down. It is the five and last witness Vikings. Only 22 out. Fozard's in there at dummy half. Going to come left to Lyons. Lyons then gets it away. And Wild there's a gap there. Wild's then trying to get that free away. And it's going to be called a forward pass to Max Roberts. Otherwise I think Roberts might have been actually over the line there when he collected that. So it just shows you how close the witness Vikings were. But the final pass called forward. Whitehaven living dangerously once again. Turnover ball. Yeah, if, if that's in a forward pass, Jordan, I think he puts that over the line. Uh, like I said before, the, the, the warning signs are there. Whenever witness get into that position, they do look dangerous. Their attack looks uh, a lot more dangerous than the White Devon attack, uh, you know, down at the other end. So, yeah, uh, but great defence by by White Devon. Fortunately for White Devon, they've uh, you know got away with that forward pass. So ball in the hands of Oscar Dorn. It was a long looping pass 
I think it was Doran or Newton there, a dummy half, didn't give Vosco Doran too much um, time to work with. Ball in the hands now of Connor Holiday. Holiday's going to keep his legs pumping, keep his legs pumping. Some good runs in the last couple of minutes from Connor Holiday. Calling for the penalty on a six again, nothing given by the officials. Getting a bit frustrated with the touch judge there was Connor Holiday. The White's having taken down just 10 short of halfway. Spencer Tonks is the man that's been taken down. Ball in the hands now of Ross Ainley. Trying to keep that ball going forward is Ainley. He's fetched down just a metre short. It is the five and last. Yet again, he's calling for some interference to the play of the ball. So a couple of White's players getting slightly frustrated out there. They're not getting anything further from the match official at the moment. Ball kicked from Doran. It's collected very easily by Kieran Dixon. Then comes across to Joe Edge. Edge is going to try and step inside of Chris Taylor and Lachlan Lansky. But not able to do so. And he's wrapped up, put down. 30 metres away from the Witness Vikings line yeah I think with Ryan King going to six I say the only option is Jamie Duran when he comes to kicking so you know there's a lot of pressure being put on Jamie obviously because he's the only kicker and I think John Keel have spotted that so you know uh, poor old Jamie's not getting a lot of time with the kicks Vikings get a quick play of the ball Fazad's trying to jump out of dummy half good work off the marker Daniel Spencer Tonks fetches him down just short of halfway Dixon then trying to spot spotted the Dosca Doran wasn't back but it wasn't the best kick in the world and has bounced right into the hands of Josh Rock. Rock going to try and use his speed going to then try and use Eccleston that's trying to break through the line throws a dummy because Josh Rock, Rock good work from the full back yeah great positioning by Josh and uh, a good 20 metre run that, uh, that's got him nearly to the uh, 40 metre line so Whitehaven bringing the ball forward now through Chris Taylor has made it up to the 40 metre line centre field Newton in there at dummy half calling for interference once again oh Whitehaven and Liam Rush he's not interested one iota Singleton's a man fetched down he's put, trying to say the witness Vikings you do need to get back on side but then decides to step up with him said Jamie Dornan is now the man bringing this ball forward three witness Vikings defenders fall on him Newton's in there at dummy half to Ross Ainley Ross Ainley is then going to be wrapped up 30 metres short of the Witness Vikings line in centre field it is the five and last Newton is in there at dummy half going to come right to Jamie Dolan it's a high hanging kick end over end Edge is going to be underneath it Eccleston's there Jedge can't collect cleanly but it's judged to have come off the hand at Eccleston first so it was given as a zero tackle so this will be zero yeah, for the Witness Vikings again, another good kick by Jamie uh, again under pressure uh, and then managed to put it uh, in the 10 metre line and uh, uh, half a challenge there by Dave Eccleston would have been nice to get him up there and, and try and catch with two hands instead of the one so bringing the ball forward now are the Vikings centre field it's Ryan Insin off the wing to take this ball forward centre field 30 away Fozard uh, taken down by Spencer Tongues once again but able to get the offload away before hitting the floor was the hooker and it's Davis that plays the ball 10 short of halfway. Jordan Johnson's going to take this ball over the halfway line. Soon met by his former Kells teammate, Ross Ainley, the play junior rugby them two up on the pit, no doubt, around about 20 years ago. The ball in the hands now of Oliver Davis. Davis is going to take them around about 32 metres away from Whitehaven line. It is the five and last. Fozard goes right into the hands of Gilmore. Gilmore's butter going to kick up. Rock's going to have work to do to get to it. Does very, very well. Not too much pressure there, but in terms of the challenge, but line speed's there once again and the uh, defenders were there just to bring him down as soon as he hit the floor Ryan Ince was the man to fetch him down yeah just once again noticed that, that last witness attack there Jordan out of six tackles uh, James Newton made four of them they are targeting James Newton and I'm guessing they oh we've got However, a break Curtis Hayes not going to break through Curtis Hayes breaking through there's only Ryan Ince trying to chase back Tia there he's looking to the edge just not able to get away from Ince Tia's now trying to get a fast play of the ball Doran's in there to dummy half. Oscar Doran then gets the ball away to Jamie Doran. Jamie Doran just needs to get ball in hand. Dale and lands out with Dave Eccleston. Eccleston's breaking through the centre of the field. He's only five metres out. King needs to get into the dummy half. That's got to be a penalty. It's got to be ten minutes. And which witness Vikings defender is it going to be? Is it Shane Grady or Matty Fozard? I think it's going to be Matty Fozard, the man that's deemed to have kept Eccleston down there longer than needed. So that means there's going to be a change now because I think they were just about to bring a uh, hooker on where the witness Vikings, so they're going to see which player they need to replace, but that is Fozard in the bin, professional foul on Whitehaven, up an opportunity here to attack the witness Vikings for only 12, with 12 men for 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 minutes, uh, he's just saved a, he saved a try there, the right hand side, if they got it out after that there, was, uh, there, was, there must have been a three man overlap there, so he has saved a try that man. But it means the witness Vikings are now down to 12 for the next 10 minutes finds Holiday, did Ryan King, Josh Rourke trying to get his arm for it, he's got the ball down as Josh Rourke, it was two last week it's 
try for Josh Walk once again. That's now his seventh of the season for Josh Walk. Only one behind Curtis Tia and Whitehaven have been able to strike immediately while the Allian was hot, while the Vikings are down to 12 men. Rock's over on that left hand side. It's Whitehaven four, Widnes six. Just short of half an hour gone here at the LEL Arena. Yeah, I don't know. He's done that, uh, to be honest. He's, he's been tackled by, by the line and he's just reached out with one handed, one -handed uh, carry there and he's put that ball down nicely for a, for a pointer just uh, a four pointer just beside the sticks so hopefully we can get this six uh, get these two points for the six but uh, yeah a good good last few minutes for uh, for white has put them back in this game a combined points all of 24 points last week it was for Josh Rock that's four this afternoon he would be looking to make it six with this conversion trying to add the extras onto his own uh, onto his own uh, onto his own two points here and you can just hear our colleagues from Radio Merseyside just behind us saying what a loss the Fozard's going to be there they've had to put Hatton out there I think that interchange was going to be made but then means you've got to bring a, a middle off or a prop forward off and that's what they're doing with, with Owen Farmworth so there's going to be gaps there that Whitehaven can, can try and exploit in the next uh, nine and a half eight min uh, nine minutes now CD. that's right John you know in ten minutes you're probably going to get uh, you know three three sets each something like that uh, you know, so Whitehaven's got to maximise that three sets. You know, what they can't do is uh, is give a penalty away, drop a ball. Uh, you know, and let witness off the uh, on, off the off, off the leash here. So Whitehaven have got to really be box clever in this next ten minutes. There will be gaps out there, but they've got to put the hard work in the first three, four tackles to make that happen. So as you probably tell by the applause behind us, Josh Rock did add the extras. So it's now Whitehaven six, witness Viking six. All of the points come through the hands and then feet of Josh Rourke. And like I said, Whitehaven really need to now try and take advantage. It's going to be where the witness defence is starting to tire. Yeah, with just the, going in back, the heat as well. Just going back to my point with Newton. Uh, say four tackles out of six, I think he made there. And that, you know, I'd imagine John Key's thinking, well, they've only got one nine on and nobody on the bench, so let's tire him out. Dixon kickoff collected on the full by King. Deep kickoff by Dixon and King decides to run the ball forward himself Newton does get a fast play of the ball when he's uh, in there at dummy half and Whitehaven uh, sends him blood here they're trying to get a fast play of the ball slowed down once again by Witness King in there at dummy half goes left to Connor Holiday. Holiday's trying to twist and turn gets the offload away to Jamie Dornan then to Tia and then Oscar Dornan's got some speed I'm told there's Oscar Dornan not able to show it on that occasion as he tries to step inside can't get away from Grady the popular size is incensed looking for the penalty but Newton gets a fast play of the ball once again finds Jamie Dornan Whitehaven making them plenty of metres here making them plenty of yardage plays the ball now Newton comes right into King then takes the ball to the line, actually going to take this tackle Ryan King, wasn't too many options on him, he was just next to him, Newton comes up, Whitehaven 28 metres out, centre field, Newton goes left to Jamie Doran, Doran's going to kick early, Ince not putting too much pressure on Ince, but has to just stay in the field of play, because it was a perfectly uh, placed kick from Jamie Doran, means Ince was only sort of half a metre in from touch, and balls in the hands now of Kieran Dixon from that play of the ball. Yeah, just looking at Jamie there, he's got a box clever, you know, he's, he's, last few sets of six he's took a ball in, you know, he shouldn't be taking hit ups up, he should be given to uh, people outside him hit ups, we need Jamie for his for his thinking and his outside craft, uh, that he's really, really good at, and he look, he's looking really tired there. So Johnson in there at dummy half now, so I suppose that's where Jordan Johnson may find an extra hooker out there, is Jordan Johnson in there at 13, so he may do a spell there for the witness Vikings here, he just comes out to dummy half, finds Lyons, then finds Wilds, made for around about 15, 16, 18 metres now of the witness Vikings, and he's the five and last, only 10 metres into Whitehaven Cherry, Tom Gilmore senses there's a, there was a gap there, and he's been able to put the ball over the touchline, it's going to be a turnover ball here to Whitehaven, only 10 metres out, eight and a half minutes to go till half time as we make it. Yeah, Manic sort of five minutes there for Whitehaven, so I think that's come at a good time, that uh, uh, that kick into touch, it gives them a minute just to, for a little breather, just looking around the Whitehaven play there's a lot of hands on hips you know a lot of tired bodies out there different you know on the on the witness side we're getting ready to, uh, to try and get an error off white in their in their own 20 so uh, yeah white have just got to box a little bit clever but get keep getting through the sets of six get uh, put that ball down uh, down the down the witness half and uh, you know somebody's going to come up with a mistake soon Whitehaven bringing the ball forward Chris Taylor is the first man to do that it's a very slow play of the ball once again Chris Taylor's shirt's almost off his back as well 
Dave Eccleston now trying to bring this ball forward, but he's fetched down only 15 metres away from his own line. Trying to get a play of the ball. There's a lot of hands and a lot of extra bits of grabbing in there. And referee Liam Rush just isn't interested in it at the moment. Ainley now's the man taken down. 22, 23 metres out. Six again, eventually given by Liam Rush, the first one of the half. Spencer Thompson, the man taken down 30 metres out centre field. Newton's in there at dummy half, going to go left to King. King's going to try and find the gap here. He's King is able to make 12 metres before being fetched down. Is the Australian Newton in there at dummy half? He's going to scoot and make 10 metres, then try and find some help. Finds Jamie Doran. Doran's then going to take it out the back to Rock. Rock then finds Oscar Doran. No, Oscar Doran's going to try and get away. Is the winger? He's not able to do so. Is the 18-year-old trying to get a fast play of the ball? Rock's in there at dummy half, it's a long loop and passing to centre field to find Jamie Doran who just a little pop-up pass across to Singleton, Singleton's going to be taken down 22 metres out, 7 minutes left here in the first half, Haven 6, Witness 6. Newton comes right to Jamie Doran, having to take that ball up again there is Jamie Doran, there was plenty of options on the right hand side but didn't feel one of, any one of them was viable, it is now the 5 and last so ball's going to have to come right to King, King's going to put a little kick up, going to have to do some work there's Joe Edge and Edge is going to be forced behind the goal, goal line uh, try line for the goal line dropout so it wasn't the best kick in the world from Ryan King but he's been able to take advantage yeah I said to John before the game I hope Ryan King doesn't kick it but uh, hey that's a nice little kick and, and he's chased it himself and he's put him over the in goal so Ryan King fantastic Jamie Doran just limping away there Whitehaven will be hoping they don't lose him at all he's going to have to really stay out there and play through some sort of pain there is Jamie Doran noticeable absentee yet he's Dion Air we've seen this last week he was a last resort last week and was fetched in around about 25 minutes ago so it's going to be Johnny Gawley's plan once again this afternoon but in the meantime Curtis T is a man wrapped up with the ball first tackle 25 out ball fetched inside then to Spaniel Spencer Tongs he's taken down only 8 metres away Newton is in there at dummy half it's going to come right then into Singleton Perry Singleton has to fumble and juggle with that ball before taking hold of it and he's fetched down only two metres away just to the right hand side of the post attacking the railway end Newton's come right then into hands of Doran then finds Lachlan Lansky didn't see where Lansky just turned up from but he just seemed to appear from nowhere to take that ball but he's been wrapped up taken down ten metres away from the try line Newton's in there at dummy half it's going to go inside to Jamie Doran who's going to spread the pass to King King out the back to Josh Rock. Rocks. there was an overlap there but he's trying to knock that ball back knocks it back to King King gets the offload away to Jamie Doran so another manic 30 seconds or so Doran yet again not wanting to take an option still hasn't been tackled able to escape from that tackle is Jamie Doran could the one be an option five before half time well Jamie Doran's the man out there in playing the ball so I doubt it Newton goes left instead King King's going to go for that sort of similar kick again Rocks trying to get there going to be knocked back is it then judged to be knocked on is it knocked on by witness or knocked on by Whitehaven I think it's going to be a knock on by the witness Vikings it's going to be clock stopped with 4 minutes 40 left in the first half here and it is heading scrum down head and feed to Whitehaven again another little great little kick by uh, by Ryan King there he's either been practicing in the last few weeks or he's actually brought that kicking game with him with that suitcase from Australia so you know it's a great little kick by uh, by Ryan intentionally for, for Josh who's in great form at this moment Jamie Doran's having to leave the field. Dion Air is going to go into, uh, going to have to go in there. So it's going to be a real makeshift halfback partnership now with Jamie Doran has to leave the field. James Newton's trying to come from the base of the scrum. So it's going to be Dion Air and Ryan King as the Whitehaven halfbacks. This is going to be an interesting partnership. In the meantime, Whitehaven are attacking the line. Six again. Newton being judged to have been held down. He's Penny Singleton forced his way over. Singleton held up over the line. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half here at the LEL Arena. Whitehaven battering the witness Vikings line at this moment can they try and get some points can they try and take the lead just before the half time break but news Jamie Doran leaves the field it's a half back partnership now with Dion Air and Ryan King it really is makeshift out there for Whitehaven at the moment David it, Seeds it is indeed and what we do lose from uh, Jamie is, is a, a long great kicking game from G so uh, I'm guessing uh, Ryan's maybe have that up his sleeve as well I'm hoping so. Dion has just taken down two metres short. James Newton's going to try to scoot over from Dummy Half. Has he got the ball down there? It's James Newton. Just couldn't. Yeah, and it is. Yeah, he has got that ball down. It's James Newton. Just talking to his touch. There was Liam Rush. 
and yes it's been judged that James Newton has got that ball down Whitehaven may be doing it tough but they've just taken the lead here it is Whitehaven 10 witness Vikings 6 yeah and what I love about that last 3, 4, 5 minutes there John is, is Whitehaven's perseverance perseverance just uh, we don't need to score here we can just get another drop out we can just get a, a, another set of 6 against uh, you know, a team that's only got 12 men and they're struggling they're on the back foot so great perseverance and great uh, patience from Whitehaven and uh, it's great to see James Newton who uh, I'd love to see his tackle count this uh, in this last sort of uh, this first half uh, but a great little uh, scoot and uh, fall over fall over the line by James so Josh Rock's going to have another opportunity here as Matty Fozan's getting ready to come onto the field and we're going to see an introduction of Aaron Brown as well for the Witness Vikings but Rock's just lining up this conversion Just thinking of the kicking game there, Jordan. I'm uh, just wondering what uh, John will do. It'll be interesting to see who goes to kicking. But you know, I know James Newton. If he can get a quick player, the ball's got a good little boot on him from uh, from dummy half. So you know, maybe James will, uh, will step up there as well as an option. But uh, and my guess is, uh, you know, it's going to be somebody like Ryan King or even somebody like uh, Josh Rock. Well, from, from just going to suggest from Josh Rock. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see how. how uh, uh, John B and the coaching staff handle that change because it is a big change uh, you know we have lost a key player there and a key member of the team so around about two minutes to the half time break Josh Rock has converted that so it's Whitehaven 12 witness 6 and uh, Kieran Dixon's going to be the man to get this game back underway it's a deep kick off once again just falls at the last minute and falls directly into the hands of Ryan King who passes along to Oscar Doran Dolan's going to be the man wrapped up 20 metres out from his own line 10 in from the popular side touchline Newton just gets it left uh, sorry King just gets it left to Tia Newton now in there at dummy half as Tia's wrapped up only made 2 or 3 metres ball then inside to Daniel Spencer Tonks Spencer Tonks is going to be put down 20 short to halfway 30 away from his own line Newton in at dummy half once again he's going to go down the short side Connor Holiday got through a lot of work going forward in this first half is Connor Holiday just keeping his legs pumping going backwards there as well Taken down 10 short of halfway. Newton's going to come right to Ross Ainley. Ainley's going to be wrapped up three or four metres short. It is the five and last. It looks like it's going to be going left to King. I feel these He's going to be going left to King. And it's going to be interesting. King just going to try and put that ball along the floor. It's going to grubber, grubber. And uh, Ryan Ains eventually has to just throw it backwards. Don't think he realised how close he was to the touchline. So, yet again, probably wasn't the best kick from Ryan King, but it's worked in Whitehaven's favour. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the uh, what the winger was trying to do there. He sort of skipped it and left it for his fullback, and the poor old fullbacks come up with an error. So, I have no idea what that winger was trying to do there, unless he was going to go into touch with the ball. That's the only option, really. Yeah, and Whitehaven feel like said, I've got to make it at 30 seconds left. Could. He hasn't all the shouts have stopped the clock from behind us. He's eventually stopped the clock now. I make it 23 seconds to go in the first half here at the LEL Arena. Could an opportunity to go from the one right from the scrum. King, no, he's pointing towards Chris Taylor. It was Dixon that knocked on, trying to follow him that wayward pass from Ryan Inns. Dion Air then comes right going to run towards the line then across to Chris Taylor on the cross ball never mind the one point Whitehaven scored four Chris Taylor has gone over on this right hand side another scrum play in this game who's gone over and it's three tries in just over ten minutes for Whitehaven Witness are back up to the full Commonwealth of 13 but it is now Whitehaven 16 Witness Vikings 6 great play great play Ryan King just off the scrum there he's took it tight uh, and he's pulled in Josh Rock round the back as a disguise and Chris Taylor's hit a fantastic inside line there just got in between the centre and the in the half back and managed to beat the full back and put it down so a great little play by Ryan King Chris Taylor crosses for his fourth of the season on this right hand side and expecting that half time hooter to sound pretty much just any second any minute yeah the timekeeper's got his hand on the hooter so a fantastic time to score and Josh Rock there he's the hooter just behind us so it's currently Whitehaven 6 Witness, uh, Whitehaven 16 I should say Witness Vikings 6 and Josh Rock's going to have another opportunity here It'll be the most difficult of the afternoon but should be easier for him being a left footed kicker to try and curl this over the sticks here and give Whitehaven a 12 point advantage 
at the brick. 20 metres on the straight is Josh Rock. Eight, nine metres in from the touchline. Could go either way, this. Now the yellow has come to a hush, as you can hear, just behind us. Rock. And it's right over the black dot. He is right here in 18. Winners Viking 6 here at the LEL Arena. Jamie Jordan down below has just got some ice on that car. That could be his afternoon over. And Josh Rock's coming out there, just fiddling to the grandstand. Come on, buckles, and they should do. It's Whitehaven 18, Witness Viking 6. It's similar story to last week. Whitehaven conceded it in the opening in. going. It was Max Roberts on that right hand side following a scrum player. Gilmore able to convert. Then, uh, like I say, it was pretty much a, an error strew and opening like 15 minutes after that. Max Roberts was pulled back for a no try following a forward pass to him. And then it was all in favour of Whitehaven in the last 12 minutes of the half. Matty Fozard was sent to the scene being Josh Roke able to go over on that left hand side. A little bit of combination play between King and Holiday. Last pass was an offload to Roke and Roke able to get that ball down, just stretched out and put the ball down on that left hand side. Roke converted his own try for six points apiece. And then James Newton following repeat sets from Whitehaven. They forced a goal line dropout. They were then able to force a scrum following a knock on. Newton, a couple of ten players later, scooted out of dummy half to put that ball down. Rock converted 12 points to 6 and just before the half time Hooter sounded Chris Taylor on the back of the scrum play fantastic pressure from Whitehaven once again forcing the error and from that they've been able to come down this right hand side Taylor's touched the ball down Rock has converted at the break it's Haven 18 witness 6 your four Back underway, Josh Rock with the kickoff, collected by Ryan Ince, former course Jill Regman here up at Whitehaven from the Vikings, and is now uh, bringing the ball forward. Is now Shane Grady, second tackle is going to be taken down in centre field, 32 away from his own line. Fozard back out there now for the Vikings, now bringing the ball forward once again. Continue powering this going forward are the Vikings. Fozard goes left then finds it's uh, it Lewis Hatton from the bench who's uh, the man was breaking the line there he's only 38 metres away from the Whitehaven uh, line now ball back inside to Ollie Davis Davis is going to be wrapped up there Dion uh, involved in that tackle it's Perry Singleton and Ross Ainley there as well it is the five and last exactly 30 out centre field ball goes left to Lyons Lyons is going to put a high kick up and Josh Rock's going to collect that dead in goal and it's going to be top 20 here for Whitehaven and a, and a seven tackle set yeah poor kick by witness there just give a free uh, 20 metres to Whitehaven but yeah looking at uh, Lewis Hatton there who's just I don't know if he's just come on but that's a fantastic run uh, and they're the type of runs that's going to get witness back into this game come on just before the uh, half time break did uh, Lewis Hatton for Jordan Johnston who's spending some time on the sidelines before being reintroduced potentially later on by John Keir Dave Eccleston's man pushed back there ball in the hands of was Singleton Line speed once again shown by Vikings in the early going, but Singleton able to break his way through and make a couple of four to five extra metres post contact. Ball in the hands now, Curtis Tia. Tia is going to be fetched down just short of halfway. Newton just asking for some help heading around to the half. Ball's going to go right to Ross Ainley, who takes Whitehaven over the halfway line, hits the four, does Ainley just short of the 40 metre line. Newton in there at dummy half now goes right to Dion Air. Will note it's a, now a half back makeshift partnership. With Dion Air and Ryan King as Jamie Dorden had to leave the field in the first half. Dion Air's the man taking down 25 out, 5 and last. Newton goes right into the hands of King. King's that's here, and that's what you maybe expect from King. Uh, well, at times, say, in this half. 
try to put the kick forward a little bit of pressure put on him there from uh, from Winnis and just sort of scuff that kick away we maybe have to keep an eye on that will in this half will White even yeah I think from Kingy there it's just a dink through on the ground you know just put it on the ground there rather than over the top he sort of uh, put a bit of backspin and it didn't really go very far forward that one so Dixon now looking to bring this ball forward see ya and King's going to be the man wrapping him up only 30 or 30 meters out 10 in from this grandstand touchline ball in the hands now with Zach Eckersley he's fetched down 10 short of halfway holiday and King once again his tear has gone down blood coming from his eye there from Curtis tear yeah it's good. they are they are right and shouting behind us it is a head knock doctor needs to go onto the field and if a doctor does enter the field he should be stopping this should Liam rush it is a kick from Tom Gilmore and it's going to be yeah it was a test there Eccleston didn't want anything to do with that and uh, Josh Rock once again is going to be taken down and eventually eventually stops the player a good 30 seconds later yes, did, uh, did, the, did Liam Rush I agree John it's 30 seconds too late there there's uh, clearly uh, a lot of blood coming from uh, Curtis's tears tears uh, eye there so it is an end injury but for some reason he, uh, he managed to carry on and if that ball had bounced uh, in favour of Widness I think that Widness would have you know if they scored a try that would have been uh, a disaster but fortunately for Whitehaven uh, they're on the first tackle there uh, 20 metres out so the game has stopped there at the LL Arena on about three and a half minutes into the second half here. It's Whitehaven 18, Widnes Viking 6, Curtis Tia just getting some treatment down below us, just 10 metres into, into the territory, Widnes territory. He's able to get up and play on there, he's uh, Curtis Tia, the physio's been able to do some running repairs. Let's have a quick look. So I think oh, he said now that because he's had to seek some treatment, he now gets the green card, which means he has to be off the field of play for two minutes. Thankfully, Whitehaven's in an attacking set, and maybe you only have to do with him for three or four, uh, three or four tackles in defence. Wouldn't it be great if they did that at football? It's the ball he's diving. <laughs> ball bringing the ball forward now was uh, Dave Eccleston. He plays the ball on to. Uh, Chris Taylor, Taylor puts the ball down there, 20 metres out. Newton then comes left into the hands of Spencer Tonks, a little shimmy there from Spencer Tonks, who's made 12 metres, has the uh, has the forward, calling once again for a slow play of the ball, a wide save, and nothing given by Liam Rush. He's able to try and exploit the gap there, he's Ross and he's going to fast play the ball, Newton in there, the half, and he's the five and last, comes right to King, it's going to be a high hanging end over end kick, from Ryan King here and Dixon's able to uh, collect that and get away from the chase in Ryan King trying to get away from Dion Air but soon met by Lachlan Lansky Lucas Castle in there as well yeah high kick by Ryan there he's chased it himself but uh, he, 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 what he can't be doing he's going up there on his own you know he's just, he's just flew past him there so uh, yeah take your teammates with you and, uh, and, and tackle him and, and make it a good good first tackle Curtis is getting frustrated he's just wandering up and down this touch line he's like when can I go back on when can I go back on and Walker's just been introduced for the first time for the Witness Vikings. He's still saying, and the fourth official down below him just saying, well, you can't go back on yet. Well, Curtis, still tell me when I can. In the meantime, Gilmore now holds Bolly Hunt. Oh. Fantastic shot from Ryan King. Absolutely fantastic. Zach Eggersley did not, and I repeat, did not see that coming at all. And King took full, full advantage. And Tom Gilmore's going over here, because while it was a fantastic shot, I do not think there was any arms involved. So they will call of what would be giving us a shoulder charge. But I'll tell you no, what, whichever it was, true. it was a fantastic shot no, from Ryan King. Definitely not. That is a that is a chest that is a chest tackle with with arm. Not a lot of arm there, but that is a chest tackle. That was a fantastic hit by Ryan King. Uh, unfortunately, if uh, if T has got to go off, then you know the same's got to happen to this kid here. So yeah, Eckersley is uh, just taking some treatments. Is the uh, is the witness Viking centre? There's some blood flowing uh, from that. Potentially, I think he's maybe just bit his own lip or something. Because I'll tell you what, his Viking King was nowhere near his head. And I think say uh, one of the one of the White Haven backroom staffs now making the point that the fourth official will have T had to come off. Eckersley had to come off. But what, the only difference being except the doctor hasn't entered the field. Right. So that is the only, I think that may be the only difference. Liam, Liam Rush, it's still his prerogative to show the green card if he feels that he should be leaving the field and it's just having a couple of extra minutes. But I think so the hand was forced from Liam Rush when the doctor entered the field. So just to interest, Jordan, what dictates the doctor going on? 
doctor, I think yet again, if he feels there's, there's a head knock or something, yeah, if he feels he's here, he could, the doctor can step in at any time if he feels it's a head knock or something, something like that. It's down to the doctor's prerogative, and I think uh, Liam Rush is now explaining the same to the Whitehaven backroom staff. That, like I say, the doctor entered the field, so that's why Curtis, Curtis T had to leave the field. Looks like Zach Eckersley here isn't having to leave the field and has actually got the thumbs up from the witness Vikings physio. Yeah, that's a good old rugby leg big shot. You know, he didn't see that coming. Oh, no, he's but he, to, is he having to leave the to field? Him. Is Zach Eckersley? He's got back up and he's going to play, play on. There's oh, a green card, yeah, it's a green card. Yeah, so we are yeah. seeing that green card. So I think eventually Liam Rush is saying, well, yeah, I'm going to show it anyways. So it'll be interesting to see if Eckersley. So he gets a couple of minutes before they decide if he needs a full HIA. Curtis T is still walking down there like a caged lion waiting to get back on the field. In the meantime, Ross Ainley is now bringing this ball forward. To be honest, Jordan, I think I'd need two minutes after that shot. <laughs> I'd need a lot more than two, I'll tell you that. But uh, ball in hands now with Petty Singleton. Singleton's then going to be able to uh, just keep them legs pumping, keep leg, legs pumping, keep them legs pumping, take them down. Five shorts, well, five over halfway. T is still just next to the match if, if fourth official said when can I go back on he can go back on now so in the meantime Whitehaven bringing this ball forward through Daniel Spencer Tongues he's gone through a lot of work since he's been introduced from the bench ball in hands now a deal there then out the back to King out the back to Rock. Rock's then going to try and step inside get away from Grady he can't do that's going to be wrapped up but they're only 20 metres away here at our Whitehaven Newton's in there at dummy half <coughs> ball inside then to Ross Ainley and he's going to be taken down 18 metres out five and last Newton in there at dummy half is going to come left to King King's going to put, try and put a little kick forward and it's going to be lost there by Kieran Dixon and he's it's got all sorts and I mean absolutely all sorts went on there and I think he no no it's a week well then, where I th yeah, so Kieran Dixon's knock on was in the f initial was the field of play so we come back for the scrum rather than the goal line dropout it's a complicated game, is rugby league at times. Head and yeah, feet to right Whitehaven. Decision. Yes, you could just see, I could see you just getting a little bit angsty there, David. See, just yes. of what decision was going to come from the match official. But yeah, I think you were just as the initial knock on from Kieran Dixon and the big push from Ryan King once again was uh, forced the uh, forced the, a, a goal line drop out. Eventually, the knock on come in the field of play. So scrum down, head and feet to Whitehaven. But it's a tricky, it's a tricky kick to you know. It's that ball. It's that uh, it's a terra firma. Then it can go anywhere, and it did. And Dixon struggled. Right. So you've struggled. got to give a penalty. Got to give a penalty to Liam Rush. There we go. And if Whitehaven have got any sense, they would take the two. Definitely, yet yeah, told from Stephen Kirkbride just behind us, take the two, get us three scores ahead, and just take a minute out the game. Yeah, and that's what they're deciding to do with Whitehaven. Fantastic work from Whitehaven once again. And I'll tell you what, Ryan King's becoming like Darren Lockyer out there at the moment at standoff. He is indeed, John. And that's exactly what Whitehaven got to do. You know, that, that'll be frustrating witness at this moment in time. Witness will want to come out here in the second half, control the uh, uh, territory, they'll want to control the pace of the game. And the more Whitehaven can take that away from them, the more witness are going to get frustrated because witness are playing catch up rugby now. So, and it will be, it'll be three scores after this. So, you know, there will be a little bit of uh, risk and a little bit of panic setting into uh, as time goes on. Uh, if witness can't get anything from, from this game in the next sort of 10 15 minutes, so you know, Whiteham have just got to, uh, as I say, control the territory, and that's getting through your set of sixes uh, and, and playing witness where they don't want to be played. And Josh Rock is able to add the extra, so it's Whitehaven 20 now, winning as Vikings 6, like I said, putting that up to a 14 point game, meaning at least three scores that Widnes need to get back into the game now and just extending that lead and while Whitehaven yet again it's it's good game management David Sage you're missing the half back pairing you're just able to take a minute or two out like that and you know you've pretty much guaranteed the ball back from the kickoff as well he is and Ryan King uh, you know he's an experienced player probably not an experienced half back uh, or, or if he's early years uh, may, may so otherwise but you know he's controlling this game <laughs> So the kickoff, Curtis Tia had to run back for that, and then a little juggle and a fumble, but able to collect at the second attempt before the ball hit the floor. Then find Ross Ainley, and Vikings are pushing Ross Ainley back here, but he's able to hit the floor just before he was pushed behind, back behind the try line. But it means Whitehaven first tackle right on their uh, right on their try line. Spencer Tonks is bringing the ball forward. He's going to be taken down exactly 10 metres out from his line. <laughs> Rock in there at dummy half is going to go right to Oscar Doran who's coming off the wing to take this ball forward big wraps to the young man slow play of the ball once again Newton's in there at dummy half going to go right to Dion Air. Dion then finds Lachlan Lansky 
once he's going to be taken down 25 metres out, five in from the uh, popular side touch line ball then inside then to Dionet, Dionet there's a gap there for Dionet to try and exploit try to get inside there of Ant Walker, wasn't able to do so but made five or six, seven metres, it is the five and last Newton's going to do the kicking from dummy half and trying to get behind Kieran Dixon, able to collect on the full he's Dixon but he's collecting 20 metres out from his own line and then soon meets Ryan King once again and I'll tell you what he won't want to see too much of Ryan King again this afternoon with Kieran Dixon. Yeah and that's the dominance I'm talking about, that's a good set of defence from uh, from Witness that was restricted right Evan but uh, yeah some that's, again, Whiteham react accordingly. Uh, Whiteham react accordingly. Some good defence by Whiteham in the first two tackles to control that tackle, and that's what Whiteham have got to do. You know, Witness will want to play the ball fast. Whiteham have got to slow and control them, control the rook. Certainly, well, we've got another stoppage in play. Paddy Singleton's needing some treatment. Just stayed down after the tackle I think we could see Paddy Singleton leaving the field here potentially for, yep, for today here yeah, that he's signalled and I'll be honest with the way that Pe Pez is sitting down and on his haunches I think that could be his afternoon done yeah he's a he's a he's, he's a tough fella isn't he it reminds me uh, it reminds me of Jerry Fatty Lofer sort of small share low, low sense of gravity and, and just you know for the size of him he just pushes through tackles constantly so it is Paddy Singleton to leave the field for the HIA yeah. Uh, Tom Walker is going to be the man to replace him. He's well even the field, a bit groggy there at his pace. He gives a clap to the grandstand and he's clapping him as he leaves the field. But yeah, looking at him there, I, I don't. I think that might be Singleton's afternoon done there. Uh, there, 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 David Seeds. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, he's just uh, he's just come back from Las Vegas recently, I believe. He, he possibly could think he's back in Las Vegas with the way he's walking off the field there. But in the meantime, witness now are back on ball in the <laughs> right shot on from Ryan King once again on Shane Grady near over to put the second rower to the floor on this occasion play the ball 38 metres out now here out witness from Whitehaven line <coughs> Lyons gets across to Dixon Dixon is going to try and step back inside but meets Dion there there instead five and last 28 metres out ball comes right to Gilmore Gilmore's going to put a cross field kick in it's going to be knocked on in the hands Oscar Dornan I believe he's got some speed as Oscar Dornan Oh, he hasn't, wasn't able to show his speed there. He was just got to get back there. Had um, Zach Eckersley. He was nearly aware there was Oscar Jordan. The ball in hands. I would currently say that should be a penalty for the high shot on Tia. It's not forthcoming. Then got a head round, uh, an arm round the neck of Curtis Tia. Nothing given by the match officials. Walks puts his in there at dummy half. Now finds Tom Walker. Whitehaven on the front foot once again. I think around about 12 minutes gone here in the second half at the LEL Arena. It's Whitehaven 20, witness 6. Ball goes right from Newton in at dummy half to Ross Ainley on falls onto his back does Ross Ainley in the tackle centre field 28 metres out Newton going to go right into the hands of Dion Air Dion Air out the back to Rock. ball's going to go forward well ball's going to hit the floor potentially forward but Eccleston couldn't collect anyways and it's now Witness Vikings with ball in hand they're only 20 metres away from their own line five in from the popular side touchline yeah they're the type of errors Jordan we don't need they're unforced we don't need that we just need to get the next tackle the next tackle put a little kick in and you put Witness back under pressure and they've just let them off the hook again Ryan Ince is jumping in, in and out the tackles He's uh, made five or six metres post contact there as Ryan Ince. Fozard's in there at dummy half. Daniel Spencer Tonks, however, it just picked him up and dumped him onto his front. That's five short of halfway centre field. Dixon in there at dummy half, gets away then from uh, is it Adam Brown. Brown sidesteps a couple, takes witness over the halfway line, and now just short of the Whitehaven 40. Ball goes left, Fozard then into the hands of uh, Joe Lyons. Lyons is going to put the kick forward. And it's just going to find such there. So it's going to be white here and play the ball here. On the uh, on the last to be centre field and I think another interchange is going to be for white here as Lucas Castle's getting ready to come onto the field. Yeah, I think them type of kicks from Witness John in touch uh, sort of suit white here at this moment time. It just gives them a little minute to uh, to to get themselves back, you know, a little rest there and uh, and compose themselves and, and go for another set of six. So. If I was John Keir, I'd be, uh, I'd be wanting to keep that ball in play and, and put pressure on Whitehead. So Lucas Castle's getting ready to come on to the field. He's going to be replacing Ross Ainley. Let's see, around about 12 and a half, 13 minutes gone in this second half. Whitehaven 20, witness 6. Dave Eccleston plays the ball, then ball comes across to Tom Walker. Walker's going to be taken down, 25 away from his own try line. <coughs> Newton yet again calling for the slow play of the ball. Nothing given once again by the match official by Daniel Spencer Tonks is now continuing to power forward and power forward and it really seems that lone spell of Rochdale really really done, done him well he's done 
showed uh, good power and pace in the last couple of weeks and it's Lucas Castle now just back onto the field Lewis Hatton's trying to spot Ryan King there able to get the King away was kick away was Ryan King it's going to be collected there by Joe Edge 15 metres away from his own line not the way again not the worst kick in the world from, from Ryan King especially the pressure he was put on but the offload then gets away no but uh, 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 yeah, good kick by King but a good ch kick chase as well right around the uh, the ball player so Ince now with ball in hands around 40 metres away from, from his own try line now taken down five there short that calls of knock on from behind us he's able to keep hold of that was Ince Gilmore in there at dummy half goes left to Grady Tom Walker, Newton and Lucas Castle and the men involved in bringing Grady down six or seven metres into Whitehaven's half then Brown gets out to the Lions Lions and out the back of Dixon Dixon's going to try and step inside he's not going to get away from Dion Air or Lachlan Lansky so a couple of tackles left in this set and witness Viking to 28 metres out away from the Whitehaven line Small play the ball as Dixon struggles to get up comes inside to Brown then finds Walker Walker's going to be wrapped up 20 metres out just to the left of the post going to go left towards the popular side Gilmore's looking for the little kick over the top Josh Rock's up there able to collect fantastic work from Josh Rock out the back able to collect that and then being wrapped up Dion Ayres in there at dummy half and Dave Eccleston's going to be looking to bring this ball forward still short to the 10 metres ball in the uh, hands now of Chris Taylor back in centre field Singleton's back out from the changing room so just going to wait now there to see if he's passed his HIA, see if he's going to return to the field or not. Curtis T is a man with ball in hand, backs helping their forwards out here. And it's Antonio Lucas Castle now, and I think this will be fifth tackle. It is fifth and last. 38 metres out, centre field. Newton in there at dummy half is going to come this way to Ryan King. King's going to step inside to get away from Brown. He can't get away from Brown, then the ball falls into the hands of Josh Rock. Rock's going to put the kick in. And it's going to be collected on the full by Joe Edge, but on the 30 metres this time. You can see the really saw to do to uh, Dean It was a good pick up and pick up and put down from uh, Joe Edge, but he's been there uh, from Dean on Joe Edge, and he's just been real to have taken him only just had to over the horizontal. It's going to be a penalty here to the witness Vikings. Yeah, I thought uh, I didn't think that was that too bad, Jordan, but then again, you know, I'm a White Devon fan, so I wouldn't so. But. Uh, a shame that real real shame because I thought it was a real good solid tackle yeah but just going back to that kick there you know that's where you know they're picking out Ryan they're putting a lot of pressure on him and you I think Josh has got to be that second option to, you know and he just kick that ball as far as you can so bringing the ball forward now are the witness Vikings the start this only 28 metres away from the White Haven try line fine work just been reintroduced for John Keir's side and he's bringing that ball forward he's going to make a couple of metres going backwards Castle and Newton both involved in that tackle Fozard's going to go right to Gilmore Gilmore then finds Shane Grady Ryan King involved once again and he brings Grady down but they're only two metres out here a witness Fozard goes left to Farmworth Farmworth runs at Tom Walker bounces off Tom Walker but Whitehaven's defence does scramble Newton Spencer Tonks and Lansky all involved Fozard's going to come right onto Ant Walker. Ant Walker shouldn't be stopped from there, but he is going to be stopped from there. Fantastic defence once again from Whitehaven. That's Tom Walker on that occasion. It is the five and last because Whitehaven survived. Ball comes right to Gilmore. Gilmore's good little kick from. Uh, it's going to be collected by Rock. Rock's nearly through there, but wrapped up. Rock's Great. trying to get a fast play of the ball. T is in there at dummy half, then finds Ryan King. King's just going to push off Dixon once again. Brown and Farnworth's involved in that it's a fantastic effort from Whitehaven out there at the moment as Lassarusa Taboo comes on the field to replace Spencer Tonks that's Tonks. a fantastic set of six by, uh, by Whitehaven you know working for each other defending for each other nobody's coming over that line and great positioning by Josh Rock for that little kick there so Newton then finds Lassarusa Taboo Taboo just pushes Shane Grady off they're really running with power and pace at the moment to Whitehaven they feel they've got this game in their hands they are 14 points to the good it's Whitehaven 20 witness 6 Newton's the man caught with the ball 5 and last on halfway Rock's in there at dummy half Rock's going to try and kick out the dummy half and in's close to the touchline once again but is able to collect on the full 15 metres out fetching the ball forward he's going to be wrapped up 22 metres away from his own line yeah set for set Jordan that's all White have got to keep doing put the pressure back into uh, back into witness court there you know they've got to come 60, 70, 80 metres to score a try so you know just keep getting through your sets keep putting that ball in their half and keep defending like they're defending 
So Sam Wild now bringing the ball forward for the Vikings. He's going to be fetched down just short of halfway. Fozard's in there at dummy half. Going to come right to Lyons. Lyons takes the dummy and then passes it along to Ant Walker in centre field. Just threw his head back in the air looking for the penalty. Did Ant Walker? Nothing forthcoming from referee, uh, referee Liam Rush. Brown then across to Lyons. Lyons then is going to get the cut out ball across to the centres on that side Max Roberts, Roberts is going to be wrapped up 30 metres out, it is the five and last Lyons is going to put that kick in, that's going to be far too deep Oscar Dorden's let that bounce however he should never let a rugby ball bounce but the bounce has gone in his favour, it's going to be a top 20 and a seven tackle set in favour of Whitehaven. Yeah, the more pressure you can put on this witness team, the more mistakes the more errors they will make and that's a poor, poor kick uh, you know, it, it, you're right, he shouldn't let the ball bounce, it could have bounced back, but uh, fortunately for White, it's gone dead. So it looks like Perry Singleton's going to be okay to carry on, he's just warming up on the touchline down below us, so it looks like he'll be okay to retake his place on the field, which wouldn't be, I'm, I'm sure David Seeds will be quite surprised about. In the meantime, Whitehaven now bringing the ball forward through Tom Walker. Walker is in centre field, five short to halfway, Newton is in there at dummy half going to go down the short side right to the popular side to the hands of Dion Air. Dion is going to try and break through the line there he's the Papua New Guinean trademark run from Dion Air. taken down there 32 metres away from the witness line Newton in there dummy half is going to come right Walker Castle Castle's pass goes a bit astray collected on the bounce by Josh Raw. come off his foot initially then goes back into the hands of Dion Air. Dion Air just trying to look for a gap just trying to survey the situation but he's going to be wrapped up 30 metres out I'm sure Dion has just played that ball and he's gone back to him he's going to play another <laughs> Newton in there at dummy half going to come left to Castle Castle then going to bring that ball forward he's through it's the Australian the support on his left it's Lotharusa to Boo and that's his first try in Whitehaven colours for the Fijian it's Whitehaven 24 it's witnessed by King 6 and I'll tell you what David says that should be game set and match there's a little bit of afters John there's a little bit of afters I'm watching it no punches being thrown, just a little bit of pushing and shoving. Yeah, David says I didn't see what went on, but there's some meeting the minds in the middle, like you said, no meeting the fists at the moment. Like you say, Lasarusa Davu just sort of celebrated like with Paul Gascoigne, just put his arms out towards the Kells end and said, This is what I do. He's got his first try in Whitehaven colours as the Fijian. But that's like White Haven 24, witness 6. Jordan, that's the rewards you get from set after set. It's boring, but it works. Set after set, just get through your sets. You put pressure on, on, on witness. You keep doing it, you keep doing it. They get sick of it after a bit. And, and that's the reward of, what, 15, 20 minutes of just sticking to your game plan, sticking to your sets, going sets for set, going through your pos uh, 100% uh, possession. No errors, no penalties. And that for the last 15 minutes, that's what White have done. And that's the reward at the end of it. And to be honest, that's the kind of thing John D and a, any coach in rugby league uh, is looking for. It's that kind You're of thing. see a yellow card or potentially a red card here, Liam. Uh, it's Kieran Dixon that's getting sent from the field of play. He's only a yellow. So he's going to send 10 minutes in the sim bin. Not too sure what it's for, but I don't think he's going to be the only player to leave the field. We're going to be getting a Whitehaven player leaving the field here as well. Who is it going to be? No, I think he's just having a word. Is he? Yeah, yeah, I think he's just that's calling the captains out. So it is Kieran Dixon. I imagine. I might say. I don't know. I'm not too sure what it's for. But Dixon is the man to be sent for 10 minutes. And referee's just calling the Whitehaven. Well, the both captains here just to have a conversation and say, I don't want any more of that there, fellas. Whitehaven yet again going to have another to 10 minutes being a man advantage and John Key just looking very frustrated down there you can see his shoulders are down heads looking towards the floor he'll be frustrated about the performance his sides put in this afternoon John Key not only did the, uh, the I was talking about the rewards you know after 15 minutes of just constant uh, getting through your sets from Whitehaven and putting them under pressure it's not just the rewards the try you get but you get a you know you can sense it you can feel it, you know, and there's Kieran Dixon in the, uh, in the bin because of it. They're frustrated. They're becoming more and more frustrated in this game, I'll witness. Uh, so, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if there's another, there's another sim bin after that. So, you know, they are. Um, we've got them where we want them, really. We just need to uh, finish them off. Well, it wouldn't surprise me here if he's sim bin. We may even see a penalty here. This, could this be a what would be an eight-point try? I mean, Rock's going to put that conversion up. We're not going to see an eight-point try, so nothing that wasn't deemed penalty worthy by Liam Rush and Josh Rock has converted so it is Whitehaven 26 
witness six. Josh Rourke five from five again with the boot. That means he's converted at least 13 out of 13 in his last out of them attempts last week and this week after what wasn't the good best afternoon at the bash from about a fortnight ago against the Barrow Raiders. White seven do lead here, 26-6. Witness have attempted to go short from the kickoff. It's gone 10. The ball has hit the floor as he hit the floor. That was on. It hit the floor. It hit the floor from the hands of Adam Lawton as well. But referee Liam Rush says witness have collected that cleanly. So witness do have ball in hand. We make it around about 19 minutes to go here. Be honest, the clock has been a bit stop start. There's not a clock on the scoreboard here at the Elliott Arena this afternoon. So we are trying to keep time ourselves. Fine worse now the man bringing the ball forward for the Vikings. It's fetched down 15 metres away. Fozard's in there at dummy half, going to come right to Brown, to Gilmore, then across to Lyons. Lyons is going to try and get past. He's not going to get past Ryan King. King's just dragging him, just dragging him. It's called held eventually as referee Liam Rush. Roberts is there, sorry, Ecclesley's in there at dummy half. Then it's Gilmore, then comes across to Lawton. Lawton's going to be picked up, put down on his back. And then it's... Uh, Comes across, it's into the hands of Grady. It is the five and last. I don't think Witness Vikings here. That was five and last. It's going to be turnover ball. If they did know it was five and last, it was a poor final play option. And Tom Walker's now having to relieve the field because Singleton's having to. Uh, Singleton's coming back from his HIA. So I'm taking Tom Walker might have another five minutes or so and then um, probably back on for that final stint of the game. Yeah, I can't understand what Witness are doing there, John. They keep hitting the lead. There's, a, there's always a lead and there's always round the back. Uh, and they keep on hitting the lead and they keep on sending him to uh, to Ryan King's area and right, nothing is getting past Ryan King at this uh, uh, for the last sort of 60, 70 minutes so Whitehaven bringing this ball forward now Elkiston plays the ball into the hands of Dion Air. <laughs> and Dion Air's breaking through there's no one in support at the minute Lachlan Lansky's trying to get there it's a ball over the top it's going to bounce bounces away from Chris Taylor Taylor's able to collect that ball and around uh, 5 metres into witness territory now are Whitehaven Eccleston's in at dummy half, comes left to Dion Air, then comes across to Singleton. Singleton's now back, say, back on the field and bringing this ball forward. We make it around about 17 to go here at the LEL Arena, Haven 26, Widness 6. 35 metres out is Singleton. Newton in there at dummy half's going to come left to King. King out the back to Rourke. I've had plenty of space and opportunity on this side of Whitehaven this afternoon. Rourke's got the offload away to the waiting hands of James Newton. Newton over the top to ball souls into the hand of Lasarusa to boot. Taboo's going to be put down. He's only 15 metres out here to Whitehaven. Newton's going to come left into the hands of King. King's going to take it to the line. Takes a little line ball to Connor Holiday. It's going to go back into the hands of Ryan King. King is over. King rounds up what has been a man of the match performance with a try. A well deserved four pointer. And if it wasn't game over earlier on, if they can convert this Whitehaven, he'll leave them with 26 points. And the shout of easy from behind us it's Whitehaven 30, Witness Viking 6. It is easy at this moment in time, John. It really is. They're defending quite easily at uh, at their own end and in attack. Uh, you know, they're, they're scoring nearly every set of six at this moment in time. So, but a, a bit of fortune there from uh, for White um, with uh, somebody's made it half a break. I can't think who it was. DNA, but, uh, DNA has put, we've gone through, and this try uh, the witness players tried to rip the ball out, and he's ripped it straight into with a bounce straight into Ryan King, uh, Ryan King's and, and uh, Ryan's. Uh, over for, for, a, for a great try and uh, what a great performance from that kid so Josh Rock's going to have another opportunity to add some extras it's currently Whitehaven 30 Widness Viking 6 make it around about quarter of an hour to go here at the LEL Arena so there's still plenty of opportunity here for, uh, for Whitehaven to try and get some more points on the board because you don't feel like Widness Vikings should get back into this game you, you do seem very dejected behind the post there at the LEL Arena just looking to try and get some later scores just while we're waiting Josh Rock to line up this conversion in the Super League Wakefield could be on for their first win of the season it's Wakefield 18 Leeds Rhinos 14 down into the Championship Barrow 12 Keighley 16 Bradford Bulls 26 London 6 Swinton 8 Halifax 18 20, oh, sorry, 30 points to 6 here make up 32 points to 6 with Josh Rock's conversion and it's a tight game over at Kingston Park Newcastle 12, Batley 14. Just dropping down into League One earlier kickoff. Jewsby won 30 points at six down in Cornwall. And accordingly, a later score. It's Doncaster 30, Rochdale 20. So, Keefley picking up the two points as it stands. Bradford and Halifax as well, also as Newcastle, as Batley Bulldogs. But the 
couple of tight games there, especially it's Craven Park in Kingston Park. Game is now back underway. Josh Ro um, sorry, Tom Gilmore with the kickoff. And kickoff's been allowed to bounce and it's gone for the goal line dropout. So not the start Whitehaven would have wanted coming back into this uh, but they have got a 26 point advantage we make it 14 minutes to go yeah 14 minutes Jordan is looking at me 14 minutes what Whitehaven can do is exactly what they've just done there is switch off you know that's got to be a catcher uh, catching that one and giving it to the prop so you've got to get there but uh, let's see what witness have got up the sleeve so witness bringing this ball forward now they're only starting this first tackle they're going to be 22 metres out I didn't see who took the goal line dropout Fossard fans fine work gets the ball away to Lawton Lawton going to try and keep his legs pumping he's now going backwards there is Lawton and then given a penalty because Lawton's decided to throw himself to the floor and because he's gone over the horizontal they get a penalty I don't like that rule at times because the player can just throw himself to the floor and understand you've got to watch dangerous tackles but do it a dangerous tackle don't go just over the horizontal because the player's just going to throw himself to it as Adam Lawton did just there Jamie Doran looks like he's getting ready to noise now I thought he was just getting ready to come back on the field he's actually limping away just taking his bib off there was Jamie and I thought he might have been getting ready to come back on in the meantime win the side attacking the white Haven line through Sam Wilde Wilde's going to be wrapped up to Boo uh, Newton and uh, Lucas Castle all involved there Fozard's going to go left they're only five metres out Lions is going to come back from where this uh, being about to where it come from oh well, that, could you write it could you absolutely write it he put the kick through there did uh, did Joe Lyons it ricocheted off his own man back into his own hands wasn't expecting it and has knocked on when it's not your day David Seeds it just isn't your day and it, it was a, 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 just a kick for himself Jordan you know that's how desperate they are now it's just a, a little kick for himself there nothing really on there just again a little bit of frustration creeping in with the halfbacks there and uh, you know just a, a, a nothing kick and uh, yeah really really fortunate for White Evan that we got that one so it's scrum down heading for to Whitehaven, 10 metres out, centre field. And Newton passes the ball from the base of the scrum and finds Curtis Tia. Tia's going to be wrapped up, 15 metres out. Rock in there at dummy half then finds Lassarusa to Boo. To Boo's met by Farmworth and Lawton involved there as well. 28 metres away from their own line of Whitehaven. Newton's in there at dummy half then finds Singleton. Singleton's going to keep his legs pumping, keep his legs pumping, show no ill effects being able to return to the field following going for the HIA earlier on 10 metres short of halfway here to Whitehaven centre field ball goes to D on there then finds Lachlan Lansky Lansky's trying to find a gap on that right hand side there seems to be plenty of gaps for Whitehaven to exploit both on Witness's left and right hand side edge and Lansky's taken down 2 metres short of the Witness 40 pass from Taylor wasn't the best in a dummy half and Dione had to be able to uh, grab to, to, to collect that he's wrapped up there it's a Papua New Guinea 38 metres out now away to Evan it is the five and last ball goes right to King King's kick ricochets off uh, Sam Wilde it is still the five and last and James Newton's going to put in an up and under Connor Holiday is the man chasing it Ryan Ince is able to collect he's not able, going to be able to find uh, Broken Field though however he's going to be wrapped up by Curtis Tia and Lasarusa to boot just like they've seen that kick a little bit deep but it's uh, you know it's only got to the 20-30 uh, metre line there so you know a, a deeper kick would have been better from UT had plenty of time to put it where he wanted it really Whitehaven uh, sorry witness now bringing the ball forward Jordan Johnson just come back on the field to replace Matty Fossa Jordan Johnson was off the field for a long period of time there I'm surprised he wasn't being introduced earlier by um John Cage just to try and swear the white end of momentum but in the meantime there's going to be breaking away here it's uh, Max Roberts but he's been able to wrap up there he's 20 metres out Kieran Dixon's getting ready to come back on the field to make it back to a full complement of 13 for witness and then it's going to come right across now into the hands of Johnson Johnson and out the back to Gilmore Gilmore's going to put a little kick forward Oscar Dorden's just going to try and collect that and then he's just going to try and hit the floor and make sure he doesn't get put in the touch there he's Oscar Dorden has been able to do that I make it around about 10 to go here at the LEL Arena it's currently Whitehaven 32 witness 6 T is going to bring this ball forward just taken down just short of uh, 10 metre line Rock's in there at dummy half going to come across to King Ryan King doesn't get man of the match I want to know what sort of game <laughs> any of who was picking it this afternoon has been watching he's had a fantastic effort out there has Ryan King balls in the hands now of Dave Eccleston Eccleston going to be taken down he's made plenty of metres trying to get a fast play of the ball Newton's in there at dummy half now finds Dion Air. Dion Air's then going to make 10 metres wrapped up there is a Papua New Guinean takes four of you to put him down centre field 40 metres out from his own line 10 short of halfway it is the five and last Adam Lawton's about 8 yards offside 
King is able to get that kick away. Yet again, not the best kick, but it's going to bounce, bounce and bounces into the hands of uh, Kieran Dixon, 20 metres out from his own line. He's going to bring this ball forward. He's the full-back and he's going to be fetched down eventually. 10 short of halfway, Lansky and it's... Uh, Dave Eccleston both involved in that tackle yeah as we thought Jordan again not the best of kicks but uh, that's what Whiteham have got to do and that's what Whiteham are uh, uh, coping with at this moment in time you know they're not getting the best kicks but uh, this defence uh, it doesn't matter where uh, where we kick at this moment in time there's nobody getting through that defence at the moment so witness continue to bring the ball forward the witness man's fetched down Holiday King and Taboo all involved it was uh, Adam Brown who had, hadn't liked something he's seen there's Adam Brown or had and in the meantime, Samuel's going to go down on that left-hand side. He gets away from Dionair. And Wells going to be in on that left-hand side corner. Like I say, around about nine minutes to go. Witness have gone in over that left-side side corner. So it's now Whitehaven 32, Witness 10. And I think the Whitehaven defensive took a pounding in that sort of last five or six minutes. And I think the eventually the defence has just broke. And Witness are in for their second of the afternoon. Yeah, that'll be disappointing. Aren't you? Disappointing for the Whitehaven players there. Um, you know, it was just, it just, got, just got on the outside of Dion there. And... Uh, you know, Dion looks really tired. The physios, uh, physios want to do a sub there for somebody, but yet, looking uh, well, they did look uh, untouchable. You know, there was nobody going through that uh, that, that, that defence line for the last sort of 15, 20 minutes. But they've just put the mockers on them and uh, and they've just scored a, a try just outside there on the uh, on the right edge. So confirmed. Eight minutes to go here at the Ali Al Arena and. Uh, Gilmore, was he, was he able to convert? Yes, yeah, so White Devon 32, Witness Vikings 12 here at the LEL Arena. Fantastic conversion from what David Seeds tells me. I was just checking the time. Um, so, yeah, fantastic touchline conversion from Tom Gilmore. White Devon 32, Witness Vikings 12. Gilmore from the touchline. And Tom Walker's come on the field. Not too sure who has left the field. It's Petty Singleton once again. So, just put a final stint in there. Has Petty Singleton. And White Haven still got a potential of wanting to change to make out there if uh, if they want. Yeah, one thing I have been impressed with Jordan is impact uh, impact of uh, the changes. You know, for every change that's that's come off and gone on, that there has been an impact on that uh, on that substitution. Whoever that has, has has been, you know, there's been a good good impact, and that's what you need uh, to beat teams like this. So kick off from Josh Rock is collected by Ryan and then just shuffled along to Adam Lawton Lawton's going to be met there 18 metres away from his try line Castle and Lansky the Australians combining to make that tackle ball in the hands of Max Roberts Roberts is going to be pushed back just, just back behind the 30 metre line for the Witness Vikings Lansky and Walker involved on that occasion it's Jordan Johnson scooting from dummy half he's made 10 metres being fetched down by Lasarusa Taboo and Lucas Castle Dixon in there and Dummy Half's going to come right ball falls into the hands of Oliver Davis just over the halfway line for the Vikings six and a half to go here Johnston then to Gilmore Gilmore's only going to kind of get the ball out the back but Dixon hits the floor then gets away to Oscar Jordan Oscar Jordan can he get away he's tumbled there as Oscar Jordan and I think that just little stumble there following what was I think she, a trip well it wasn't a trip he fell over the leg of Ryan Ince there and just stumbled Jordan wasn't able to get away has slowed the uh, winger down there but ball in the hands from Rock then gets across to Lansky Lansky's going to try and step inside one step inside two and Daniel Spencer Thomas is getting ready to go back onto the field for the last six minutes here yeah Lansky's just a, a, yeah, a couple, couple of times a couple of times there uh, just Oscar just half breaks but yeah just hadn't really got the momentum off the uh, off the catching the ball so yeah I'd love to see him in space to see uh, you know so fast he really is King then gets the ball back inside to Tom Walker 20 metres out here Walker's taken down just to the left hand side of the post Newton's in there at dummy half going to go right to King King just offering the ball up to, to anyone he's going to throw the dummy there he's King and trying to get through himself he's Ryan King he's been taken down 10 metres out it is Darren Lockett he's throwing dummies <laughs> everywhere Taylor in there at dummy half then finds Dion Air Dion Air trying to get away from one gets the offload away to uh, Lucas Castle Castle still is searching for his first try in a Whitehaven shirt but he's taking down only a metre short five and last Newton's in there at dummy half going to go right to King can King get that ball three offload he has he's found Dion Air he's then going to come across to oh yes Whitehaven absolutely fantastic play for Whitehaven and it's Chris Taylor who's gone in on that right hand side there's five minutes left on the clock here at the LEL Arena Chris Taylor's gone in for his second of the afternoon it's Whitehaven 36 Witness Vikings 12 again that 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 man Darren Lockyer oh sorry Ryan Ryan King 
uh, in amongst it uh, got the ball there he's attracted two three defenders and he's managed to get a little offload there not the greatest of offloads but uh, he's got an offload to Dion Air who's put Chris Taylor in on the right hand side uh, wing there so uh, another assist from Ryan King everything he touches this moment in time is turning to gold Green and gold of Australia out there for Whitehaven at the moment. It's been a fantastic performance for Ryan King. Chris Taylor's been able to put that ball down on that right-hand side for his fifth try of the season, his second of the afternoon. It's Whitehaven 36, Witness Vikings 12, and Whitehaven just trudging themselves back. It's been a warm afternoon out there for Whitehaven. It's been a warm afternoon for Witness Vikings, but it's Whitehaven that's going to take the two points against this Witness Vikings side. and It's going to be Josh Rock going to be lining up this conversion right on that popular side touchline 20 metres out but on the angle you're looking at 30 metres plus for Josh Rourke just under four minutes to go this is BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Online via the BBC Sport app and the BBC Sport website thank you very much for your company this afternoon here in West Cumbria the LEL Arena Championship Rugby League action and Whitehaven's going to be the victors here Whitehaven 36 Witness Vikings 12 Josh Rourke with a touchline conversion here to try and notch on these extra two points just slides along slides along the uh, the post there for uh, Josh Rock so not going to maintain 100% with the boot this afternoon he's Josh Rock but he has been 6 from 6 up until then 6 from 7 so and a try of his own so that's what 16 points to go with his 24 points last week he's a man banging for himself at the moment he is indeed I always remember Kevin Etherton telling me uh, early doors when they did sign him you know this kid's uh, yeah, he's a railing, uh, and I know initially he didn't really get uh, his, his, that full-back position, uh, Sam, uh, Sam Freeman was there, but you know he's took his chances and he's a man in form and he's had a fantastic uh, game at the back today. Oscar Dorner I think just lost that in the sun and uh, wasn't able to take that, so it's bounced out for a goal line dropout, so around about 2 minutes 40 left here as we make it here at the LEL Arena. Yeah, just a little bit of inexperience there, just going over yeah. his head, just uh, should be at the back and then coming onto it rather than go the... Uh, front to back so but uh, yeah uh, four minutes left three minutes hopefully Whitehaven can uh, can defend this set of six from witness Josh Rock with the goal line drop out it's going to go 45 metres before being collected by Joel Lyons then fetches it inside to Oliver Davies that's a big hit big collision there between Tom Walker and Oliver Davies well. so then ball in the hands now of Adam Lawton Lawton's then going to be bringing this ball through the middle Holiday Spencer Tonks who else is involved in that tackle as well who's going to be that last man off for Whitehaven it's going to be James Newton just having a word or two there it's just James Newton with Lawton ball in hands now with Dixon Dixon he hasn't had the best afternoon out the back there and it's just been wrapped up there by Curtis Tier 6 again however given by referee Liam Rush just for a little bit of an extra pull on the leg there from Curtis Tier and the ball's in the hand now of Davis Johnson in there at dummy half go between between himself and Adam Brown and Johnston who would probably love a try here on a return to the Yellow Yellow Arena played for Whitey Evan once but never hit at the Yellow Yellow Arena ball goes, goes across to Lawton then on to Gilmore Gilmore out the back to Dixon Dixon can he wrap off he can't wrap off that performance fantastic tackle by Oscar Jordan then Curtis Tier and eventually completed is it by uh, Connor Holiday yeah great read by uh, winger and centre Gilmore's going to put a little grubby kick forward going to be collected on, on the bounce there by Ryan King he's here, he's there, he's everywhere at the moment he's Ryan King and he's just able to collect that and he's going to be wrapped up 15 metres out there yeah I think he just felt it I don't think he was looking for that kick ah. and then it's going to be a just ball lost there he's by uh, Chris Taylor it's become a bit scrappy in the last couple of minutes or so following the, uh, from the Chris Taylor's try we make it a minute to go here at the Alley Arena it's going to be head down uh, yeah, head down to uh, head down scrum and feed to uh, the uh, Witness Vikings centre field uh, 18 metres out yeah there's got to be a lot of tired bodies out there Jordan the effort and uh, commitment these lads have put in today has been phenomenal so they're entitled to uh, to put their hands on the hips to take a little breather here but uh, hopefully late you know they finish on a high and uh, Witness don't score here so ball comes across the lines from the base of the scrum then boxing inside is accurately accurately trying to get away from one can't get away from Daniel Spencer chunks though however wouldn't see him knocking on the door less than 10 metres out Johnson in there at dummy half is going to go across to Brown then finds Lawton Lawton is then going to be wrapped up taken down by Lansky and Castle 
Johnson in there at dummy half's going to come right to Lyons out the back to Gilmore across once again to Dixon Dixon then going to try and step inside he's not going to get past Curtis Tia and it's a penalty for crossing so that should be the final play of the half for the Witness Vikings we should be white here and just have an opportunity here to knock this into touch and then start bringing this ball forward and the next penalty for something said out the turn to uh, the match official and there is the Hooter so Josh Rock is going to have just knock this ball at the touch if he does he would be sensible about it just take the tap take the tap and then just quickly hit the touch Josh yes there we go I think he was actually having words with Liam Rushes sir can I do that but in the meantime it's full time here at the LEL Arena Whitehaven pick up back to back wins a somewhat unexpected win at Sheffield last time out and I don't know if this week's unexpected just said it was going to be a tight encounter David Seeds but in the end up it wasn't all that tight Whitehaven full worth their uh, two points this afternoon yeah I've been looking to this uh, looking forward to this all